Welcome to Love Cars on the Grid, your global motorsport podcast roundup. Unusually, we're together today because we've been uh, doing a bit of a promo video for the new series of Love Cars on the Road. Uh, so you have to watch out on another video on Love Cars main channel. <laughs> But today's all about motorsport. This is the home of motorsport in terms of podcasts. And what have we got on the agenda? Well, we, first of all, we look back a little bit because we've had the Dakar uh, rally. So we look back at that. Then we're going to look ahead because motorsport is just beginning to kick off. That's the main thing. So we look But last. We had Formula E <laughs> and we had uh, Daytona 24 hour race. And um, of course, the uh, Monte Carlo rally. Yep. But, uh, and we have news as well. We'll discuss Formula One, which is making an embarrassment of itself. We we'll discussed that. But yeah, just go back to Dakar first. First real motorsport of the year, as always, and amazing. And we had a tremendous battle. Um, Audi finally winning. I think it's probably their last time they're going to invest in it as well. I think, wasn't it the last run this year? And I think if they didn't win, they probably would have come back yeah. for one more. But yeah, they, they dominated really, didn't they? Well, it was close at the end because yeah. Carlos Sainz and Sebastian Loeb in the, in the Pro Drive Hunter. Yeah. It was sort of pretty neck and neck until the penultimate stage when the, the pro driver had a suspension failure and uh, Carlos, King Carlos came. And he's about 81. He's almost as old as me, isn't he? And, and <laughs> man, how that man puts his body through. I mean, it's a tough, tough event. 7,981 yeah. kilometres. I mean, no one would do that because that's the most direct is, route. He is but... something like 61, I think. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, very good Physical. going. Physical. But I mean, the pictures, I mean, I just watch Eurosport and... Carlton Kirby. God, it's, it's wonderful. He wombles away, doesn't he? But I think it's, it's the right sort of commentary, you know, because he just looks at the scenery and... Talks us through. I them. think he's he's does it real justice actually because yeah. it is the, you're right about the scenery. It's not yeah. just about the racing yeah. and the cars. It's yeah. just majestic. And what can you say about sand and sand and sand? But he managed to yeah. find the, the right uh -huh. words. Very good. And watching those Dakar heroes, little self done videos. You have people in the middle of the night. It's dark and your bike spark plug and you're trying <laughs> to fix it and ride into the desert. It's just two weeks. It's an incredible event. I love what every year I love just sitting down and watching those highlights with Carlton gently guiding us through them. Uh, one of my good mates, Eugenio Amos, he did it in one of the uh, little pro drive cars. Um, and uh, he sadly had a multiple rollover. So, cool. uh, but just loving it. Yeah. And, you know, he's a fit, really fit younger lad than us. And, uh, you know, he was struggling. Mm -hmm. So, like you said about uh, Carlos. Well, sadly, one bike rider lost his life as always loss of life almost there was an was accident with a spectator which was quite nasty but i think they all survived but uh, it's a tough event and that's 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 what it's like yeah but that's motor racing isn't it yeah oh, yeah, yeah but, but anyway. in the new in the Very news good. though since then in the news it's formula one mainly in oh. the news in the news so we now have <laughs> i have to read this from my notes because i can't remember it we have, now have the stake formula one team kick sauber and we have the visa cash app RB Formula One team should not be allowed. It should be a Simple regulation. Should be two of names it only, should. maximum. You know, well, no sponsors' names. I mean, it's something like that. It's great. Well, we, have I have, I have said, your sponsors' name within on the car as much as you want on the race well, suit. Having said that, there was the John Player special, which we didn't. Th when and that came out, we didn't complain. The Moore and McLaren. And there's a little bit of a uh, maybe the Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> and the Red, Red Bull, Red Bull. So I think yeah, you have to allow a certain amount. Okay. But I, but I think the the word I think it sums up Formula One at the moment. The fact there's a Visa Cash app, and the Formula One it's just money, 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 and obviously they get a lot more money if their name goes into the title of the team. So the FIA should come and have some sort of limit to the number of words or something. And they just, you know, the stake. I, mean, I don't know whether poor old Crofty is going to call them Salbers and, because it's RB, he could call them RBs apparently, the Visa app. Or is he going to have to come down the Visa? Say? Is he going to say the Visa yeah. app RB is, is staking the stake into the stake? And But it's not just about the naming of the cars. It's this ridiculous fixation they have on getting everything to a street circuit just to make money, I you know, know, dropping amazing legacy circuits, historic well, circuits. Well, that's the other bit of the news, you know, Madrid, 10-year contract, out of the 10-year contract. The I mean, who's paying? I haven't read who's paying. Is it Madrid, the Spanish government? It must be the Spanish government, I presume. But then why aren't they investing the money into Barcelona? Oh, that's Catalan. There's probably you know, a bit of political yeah. divide between there. But, I mean, it's, I've looked at the track. They've already got, uh, you know, there's a computer game where you can race on the Madrid. But it's, it's just... Turn, turn, turn. It's just there's nowhere to overtake. It's tight. It's flat. And it's just they don't care. But it's entertaining, oh, Tiff. It's, it's good for partying. It's good for the DJs. It's good for the but music. Sadly, that's what I'm summing up now that they don't care. But the traditional fan, it's over. If you're a traditional motorsport fan, 
Go and watch, they don't want you. Go and watch Caterham Racing. Go and watch Caterham Racing, Formula Ford Festival. Go and watch BTC. No, seriously, it's, it's getting to that stage where... Yeah, they don't want you there. They want no, they people don't. with big budgets. There was, a, there was a, one of the tour guide people, they had a, a party of eight that they put in the paddock club for, you know, in Vegas for $7,000 a head or something. And they watched the first three laps, then just went back in and started drinking champagne. They just, they're not it's But they do, they do want to fill the grandstands. This is what I don't understand. You, you go to Silverstone, they want to fill 100,000 yeah. seats in the grandstands. And they are typically your diehards that are going to be there. So yeah. it's, it's a real balance. They've got to be careful because they can't just make it this whole big show and extravaganza. Oh, no. Great but to have some entertainment. But, but the new regulations are reading more and more. Some of the manufacturers are saying, you know, these 50% electric, this is 2026, and the, the, they're going to change down on the straights, but they've now got this active aero so they can get on the straights with the, all the wings flat and uh, it's just so scientific and it's, I'm, uh, no one knows it's a piece of string isn't it but are mercedes going to be competitive are ferrari going to come back well, and the clarinet the, edging the new regulations it will give adrian newey and i bet red bull will be <laughs> the first year of the new regulations because adrian new keeps on saying i love these new regulations but of course you do adrian because you can make a car a second lap quicker than anyone else's but for joe public i think it I think we've got two years of interesting. All these the current cars are horrible. Again, I think it was someone at, at uh, Williams or McLaren was saying how the drivers, you know, you're banging into the ground, you know, you, 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 you're sucked into the corners and you can't really handle the cars. And... What, what ultra low downforce uh, cars have you driven? Race cars? Well, my Formula One car, when I had my brief Grand Prix yep. in 1980, it was a sliding skirts. Oh, we, had, wow. we had no front wing at wow. all, with tiny little front wings, pucker ground effect. Sucking it to the ground. Well, I had this porpoise thing that they had when they brought out these new regulations. That's why I was amazed that they hadn't thought we'd get this porpoise thing, because we had this in the 1980s. And so all of a sudden, the car sucks it in, then it loses all its grip and bounces up again. It's horrendous. <laughs> But of course, they've got rid of that now, but by making the car stiffer and stiffer, but they're still millimetres off the track. And it's just, oh, it's just, you know, I don't know. I don't think it's entertaining to watch. It's just a show, a circus. So Formula One, what are your views? Are you with us? Are you, are you with the diehards? Or do you think this new party atmosphere is the way to go? No, most of my Twitter fans are with me. They, so many say I've, I've stopped watching it. I've stopped watching mm. Formula One. But they don't care. Liberty don't care. As they long don't. as they're going to have these big They're going to make money. money. Yeah. 20 teams. So the 20 teams are all still... Andretti still haven't been allowed to join in. They're keeping it closed. They're earning more and more sponsorship, more and more... So it's a moneymaker. But let's get back to real Daytona. motorsport. Daytona. <laughs> well, some real motorsport, because there was also Formula E at Diria last weekend at a Saturday race, Anderson. And I did watch the whole Sunday, and it's just... I think it's getting worse. I think the teams are so good now at computer programming making them last and they just can't overtake at Diria and the, and the sound had the volume reasonably high just to live with it and you've got this whining electric sound and the tired noise and it just yeah, the tired noise me head right, in. I was yeah. trying to and nobody yeah. took anybody the only time there's any drama because they have to use this time attack mode so they go offline and they always lose one place <laughs> which you get back again when the other guy's through it. So it's just sort of, <laughs> it shuffles the order but artificially. And it's not an attack mode, because they don't use it to attack, because when you have the mode, you've got more power, therefore you use more electricity. So you can't actually go faster because you've got to use up too much electricity. So actually, it was like when there's a pace car, they all go to attack mode then, so they can get rid of it. It's not something they want to use, it's like a handicap. It's too strategic for me. I just want racing. I want Terrible. flat out racing. But congratulations, well, Jake Dennis. Uh, our champion British show, he won one of the races, and Nick Cassidy won another with Jaguar, so it was good for Britain. But I can't believe anyone wants to watch it. Whereas and, uh, the like, and like we've said many, many, many times, these are elite drivers. These are oh, yeah, some the of the best, best drivers yeah. in the world. You yeah. need the best drivers to get the most out of these yeah. things, to drive them to the computer programme right on the limit. And, but it's just as entertainment, it's a slow bicycle race. Um, <laughs> a Monte Carlo rally, I mean, Actually, quite we, nice we, 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 race. we talked about the Monte Carlo rally in our last podcast when we did our little season review. We still got this problem, only eight cars in the top class, you know, only really four drivers. We got these, um, Sebastian Ogier came back to Toyota one of his uh, half seasons. The world champion wasn't there, Robin Perry who's not doing the whole season, sort of sharing a half a car with... Uh, Ogier. But that's great news for the likes of Elfin. Well, that's what we thought. Yeah. However, I do remember in our previous show, I did say, I'm a bit worried that the Hyundai boys, <laughs> just when Elfin gets rid of a superstar teammate, but Elfin started really well. But it was one of those rallies that, you know, Monte Carlo always tricky patches of ice, and, but they, they 
They take half a car off the road in the apexes. So Elfin on day one, because he led the fields, I think that's the championship order. I don't know how did the start order last year's championship. I guess he was second, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, so it must have been. So Elfin actually had a clean road. And further down the pack, the more people cut, the mud came out. So the guys running fifth, sixth, seventh had a slower road. Then day two, it's, it's so turned it's, upside yeah. down. Although even then the leaders that were fifth, because the real pack markers, and, and Elfin just faded on day two, sadly. And they led, he led the way so well. And then first Auger got by him. And then Thierry Neuville in the Hyundai leaped from them both. And I think at the end of the day two, or Saturday, because they all, day one is like one super special, isn't it? So by the end of Saturday, they were covered by five seconds. I think Neuville was 0.8 a second in front of Auger. It was a really good... The thing about rallying is, you know, so they're, they're like about 10 miles long these stages, or 12 miles. They're quite short. Yeah. But the end 12, there's 0 0.3, 0 0.3 between them. And I remember when I first did the World Rally Championship in, in, in my Vauxhall, not my Vauxhall, Ford Sierra Cosworth, and I found I was eight seconds a mile off the pro's pace. Wow. And I suddenly, when I'd done that first stage, I thought, hold on a minute, well, that's like eight laps of Brands Hatch Club yeah. circuit. Wow. Well, I'd be a tenth slower than somewhere else. Yeah. So, you know, you'd just be... But that's like a second a lap slower. Um, and you, you, know, you were at the yeah. time a world-class driver. But obviously with a racing car, you've, you've been yeah. round and around, you know the tracks, so obviously not. But it's, it's incredible what they do, to be so close. But then come uh, Sunday, I think, um, Nerville pulled away a bit and uh, got a good win. So Hyundai won for Ojo second. But, interest, third. but interesting with uh, Rally Car, of course, you're just relying on your... Your, your navigator yeah, with, yeah. With, the, yeah. with the notes. That is it, yeah. You're right about a racetrack. It, once you've done a dozen laps, you yeah. kind of know the track. A lot, well, a lot of them say, you know, I've got my notes right for the second run. They, they, yeah. they do nowadays, which I don't like so much. They do the same stage twice each day, so it's yeah. three in the morning. So then they change the pace there. So really, you're only going as fast as your pace notes. Yeah. Your pace note is what decides how quick you can. You just blindly commit to pace notes. <laughs> which is why they have these huge stunts of crazy, don't they, when they, he read the wrong note or he got the note <laughs> wrong or he didn't, I didn't hear the note. It's terrifying. Uh, it is terrifying. In a car heading for a blind crest and you go as fast as the mate next to you tells you to go. You know what? The, yeah, yeah. Well, they well, are rather than me. It was a good battle. We had the Brits, um, well, Elfin obviously was, was third. We only had one other British driver, name forgotten, very apologies. He's always Ingram um, in the WCR2 that's very good. We had mechanical problems and disappeared. So we only had one finisher. British Rally. Well, there's good news. I read it somewhere. The British Rally Championship was on ITV4. So good news for no, Rally World, because yeah. it does need to get more publicity in Britain. So great event, bit of ice, never the snow of the old. I thought, I was thinking about this the other day because we get Monte Carlo rallies without snow. They should get one of those snow machines off the ski slopes. <laughs> well, yeah, as long as the drivers know, we're not so surprised. Them. <laughs> there was a famous, the top of the Calder Turini, I think the name, the very famous place. It was an S-Bend right at the top. And there was always the huge spectators gathered at night. And there used to be all snow. The cars are coming through, you know, slithering and sliding. But now it's tarmac and the... Or Lots of nasty or bits like of ice. like they do in the movies, just get that snowy, sort of slushy stuff, so it looks good. No, no, it's got to be real <laughs> snow. And then, of course, real racing, um, the Daytona 24-hour race. I Did mean, you watch much of it? No, uh, I watched it Saturday evening, the first sort of beginning, but then I was, I, was at the foot, I was at the football on Sunday. I wasn't watching the finish. Sorry, team. Um, but, you know, 59 cars. There were 10 LMP GTPs, the, the hybrids that will join at Le Mans. There were 13. they still got LMP2s. It was about 26 GT3 cars, a fantastic field. And just, and of course in America, they have a lot of the yellow flags, full course yellows, so they, it's hard to get a big lead and hold it. There's a lot of drama. Do you like that or not? Because of no, course- it doesn't they, annoy me a bit. It's a bit because artificial. They, they brought that into Le Mans as yeah, well. Yeah, I know. I don't like I, it really. I, I didn't, I wasn't, I was sort of on the fence with it. I thought it was good for the excitement, but really, really awful when you're the lead car yeah. and you pull out a big yeah. gap and then, or yeah. you work really hard for yeah. an hour to pull out five yeah. seconds. Yeah, absolutely. And it's all taken away. Yeah. That is the problem. And it takes 20 minutes or 25 minutes to reorder the pack. They yeah. get them all in. The, uh, yes. So it eats up on the time as well. Yeah. But they did, they did an amazing race. They had a full course yellow with a 30 minute race at the end. And there were still four cars on the lead lap. Amazing. And uh, there was this amazing battle. It was what um, Nazir, Philippe Nazir, the Brazilian boy, won it in the end in a Porsche. Uh, but he won it by what? 
uh, 2.112 <laughs> seconds ahead of the Cadillac driven by That's... British driver Tom Blomquist with Jack Aitken, two British boys in the second Brilliant. place Cadillac. But I mean, just when you watch them go through the traffic, I mean, they, they catch up in these prototypes and these GT3 boys are all nose to tail in a bunch. It's great entertainment, you know. Great commentary with Heindy Hoff and, and Jeremy Shaw. Yep. Live, free. It was free on IMSA, oh, IMSA.com. Wow. You could watch it free. So you watch it on the internet, not on the TV? Yeah, just on the computer, yep. yeah. So it's, 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 it's just, you could turn and tune at any moment and it's yeah, entertaining because it's overtaking non-stop. Yes. Jensen Button was there. He finished in third place crew yeah. in the Porsche. So we had Jensen there as well, enjoying himself. But actually, there's a bit of a controversy, though, because these two were going hammer and nails. Blomquist was on the tail of Nazar all the time and they catch traffic and they're trying to get through. And it said there were two laps to go and they only finished one of them and the flag came out. So mm. Blomquist thought, I've got another lap, whatever yeah. he did, because the t TV said it. Because it was in actual fact, it wasn't the Daytona 24 hours. It was it the was. Daytona 23 hour, 58 minutes and 24.723 <laughs> seconds. Race. <laughs> so surely, if the 24 hours hasn't gone, you no, finish you the next lap. lap. That's yeah. why, that's why yeah. everyone, the, the TV, the monitor, the, everyone was saying it's two more. Wow. And they finished that, but it should have been one more, the flag came out. Wow. So, so he, he, maybe he would have got the last well, two Well, Felipe seconds. Massa was there. He was, he was third in the LMP2s. Was he, he talking about protest result? He was he protest? I was say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Felipe <laughs> probably said, well, no, well, uh, so Jack Aitken was also in the, in the crew that came second. Uh, James Collard, I think, was out of the Ferrari. We didn't have many Brits on the on the scoreboards. Um, the Arne Dames are out there. The, oh, the interesting thing, um, Pan. I said the French girl that was so good when I saw her driving a Lamborghini, one of the Arne Dames, and I said, Dorian Pan, is anyone going to get into Formula One? I was so impressed with her at Road Atlanta and Lamborghini. She was out there again with her own. They didn't finish. They finished about eighth in their class. Um, but she's doing the um, FIA Middle East series. And she's mm. had a couple of fifth places. 35 drivers. Yeah. She's now going to do that FA Academy, F1 Academy yeah. for, um, I don't know, she's a Ferrari girl. So, Dorian Pan, and then she was a star in Daytona. How old was she, roughly? 20? 19, 20, yes, yeah. she's younger. And the yeah. other Iron Dames are more mature and yeah. uh, have been racing. Sarah all Bovey, time. Yeah, they're all quick, yeah. but they're not really they're yeah. too old now to go single seater. But yeah. she's a quick young yeah, lady. Good. And so, Watch um, this space. We'll follow that next weekend. They're out if you check the results of the UAE F4. So um, that's on next weekend, more of that. Otherwise, we're waiting until mid-February. What have we got coming mid-February? Well, we've got some announcements coming, haven't we? We're not an announcement. We've got some reveals of Formula One cars, which you're yeah. super no, excited so. about. <laughs> Look at the colour. Do you like the new colour scheme in the McLaren? Do you like the new logo? Well, the trouble, the trouble is they're not showing you the car you're going to see every race next year because no. they've flipping changed the colour schemes from race to race. The drivers change their crash helmet colours. When you have a photograph in 20 years' time and you, you know who named the drivers in that field, you'll have no idea because the colour, which race was that? Which well, arguably, it's easier for the drivers because they'll say, oh, yeah, that was my Las Vegas crash helmet. Oh, yeah, that was my Bahrain Well, the drivers helmet. might remember it. Yeah, and for us punters won't remember it. So Rally Boys are back February 18th, Swedish Rally. That will be snowy. The NASCAR boys have got that weird event around the Coliseum on February the 4th, which looks a bit ridiculous, about 200-yard lap. But then the Daytona 500, February 18th, so... We'll probably come back after that. We'll, we'll have another capture. We'll have another we're not doing a weekly now, but there's <laughs> well, not we, much Weekly happening. when the season kicks off properly. But yes. Until then. So, yeah, look, for Swedish race. So we'll see you on February the 19th or 20th, whichever is the Monday. He's very organised. He's got his little pad here. And clipboard. Clipboard with all the dates. <laughs> and in the meantime, <laughs> you can go over to the main Lovecast channel because... Big news. Next week. Next week. Next Sunday, we're going to... Announce, give a bit of a sneak preview as to the new show, um, Series 2, which is, which, there's some amazing cars. We're back we've on some, telly. We've got some fairly, we're back on telly. We've got some fairly decent cars where we are now, but uh, that's some serious amount of cars on season, Series 2 of On the Road. Happy Valentine's Day in between. Love you all. Valentine's Day? Well, it's my birthday. That's more important than Valentine's Day.